lot of my works are mute. Sometimes I choose it because it relating to the content. I don't want to give any context to the audience. Yeah, sometimes I think the audience should focus more on the visual. I'll describe my aesthetics as minimalistic. In plus minus zero, you will see me walking forward. Although actually I have been reversing the the video so that in the performance I'm actually walking backward. You can see the snowflakes are going upwards and、um, all these kind of beautiful small gesture, which this is the visual layer. But、um, at the behind, this is a logic of myself of thinking if I can turn the time difference between Hong Kong and Japan to be reduced. That's why I'm trying to walk backward and anti-clockwise for an hour in Japan in the outdoor. Then it goes into、um, how time zone works, how time zone affect the current life. I'm Morgan Wong. I'm from Hong Kong. I'm an artist, and I'm also teaching in the university. I would describe myself as an artist, but using multiple media like performance, photograph, video, even print. I'm always enjoying simple forms, like geometrical forms. Where is the stage? It used to be an installation work. Mainly, it consists with the metal bar, which is the same height and the same weight as myself. This is relating to a myth in China. That if you have determination, then you can turn a metal bar into a needle. I'm turning it into my own determination of being an artist. After the two years that I've bought the metal bar, I take my time on researching on time and also on performance. With a chance, I'm able to work with a gallery in London. I ask them to empty out the whole gallery and just put myself, the metal bar, and a hand file in the gallery, so that I can contemplate how I can work with the metal bar, in what way and when. The work is now almost like a lifelong project for me. I do it every day whenever it is possible, and then I'm collecting the metal powder. So the metal powder is like a materialization of time. This is like a form of discipline. If you're thinking of myth of Sisyphus, it is almost like there is an forever task that you have to do. We need a way to to experience time. This is the system that I create to understand time.
in I Got Time, you will see 20 concrete sculpture aligned in a straight line while they are having different shapes. They are actually formed by me holding a cup of wet concrete from 1 midnight until 24 hours have gone. the concrete have set within the 24 hours and I go to sleep and then I will just wake up like maybe within two hours and then it's almost like it captured the time. The process for me is to to sense another um, dimension of time which we are not quite noticed in our everyday life and it's almost like giving me a new situation to experience time passing. I think in a lot of my performance I sometimes enter into another state of mind that I'm not aware of the passing of time, but that moment can end like maybe in a second or in, in a minute that I don't really aware of how long it is. I think these are all gesture you can conclude as a term that I will put as materialization of time. But the materialization is not really just about the physical object itself, it is about another understanding of time. Just like through um, holding of a concrete cup and leaving like an urban fossil. I think with the performance, it's seemingly creating a situation to access to time, so to dedicate a time to time. On the Hong Kong island, there is the tallest building um, which is called International Financial Center. It's a video installation and um, there is a major image of the building, the, tall, the tallest building on the Hong Kong island. I'm interested in how a building as whole, as a whole, and also how humans are being um, situated inside. Especially at night, you can only see the windows that are with light, and human inside are moving like shades. When I'm using a camera to focus only on one window, the movement of the human inside um, such a gigantic structure is almost like a field painting. That work is trying to look for the human element in the city.
I constantly think about where actually my interest comes from of time. There is not really a concrete answer that I think of now yet, but I think it deals with my constant relocation and also my state of being in Hong Kong, which is uh, metropolitan. And I mean, the place that I've been is London, uh, Beijing, these are all metropolitan. While in contrast, there are like places that I, I stay less long, like Sapporo and like Castle. But still, it is like a kind of secluded area, which seemingly like you're just living in there and you're not affected by other things and other time dimension in a way. For sure, it is very fast, the pace in Hong Kong. I feel like I have a resistant power to this kind of fast pace. The Lohu border is one of the major border between Hong Kong and China and it is collective memory for a lot of Hong Kong people or even for the mainland Chinese to experience that whenever you are across or whenever you arrive the border you can actually smell the difference between Hong Kong and China. So there is an installation of a white sculpture, I would say, which is reference to an archival image taken by a professor um, from America who visited China during the Cultural Revolution. He took an image of a petrol station and I took the facade of that building and turned it into a kind of minimalistic sculpture. I'm more interested to just copy the facade, leaving the inside still unfinished, as if this is like a theatrical set that can disappear anytime, just like the physical border. For this work, I've been actually working with perfumer from the international favors and fragrance who have been helping me to realize this encapsulate scent. Demolishing rumor happens in Beijing because um, at that time I was based in Beijing. As an artist based in there in 2009, I experienced a lot of rumor of Chinese government wanting to demolish the artist village. As an artist, I feel like there is not much I can do. So Demolishing Rumor is actually a video installation. You can see a miniature of a building as if it is a sculpture. And inside there is a monitor showing a person who is actually the artist who is me demolishing the same structure in a public space. And I'm hoping to demolish that rumor The recent work called um, Gikuja Standard Time is a revisit of um, the idea of time zone relating to my social political interests. 
the North Korea have changed their time zone back for half an hour to distance themselves from their colonial past. While not directly interested in um, pointing my work to the political context, instead I'm creating my own imaginary um, time zone for the audience to book through a system to visit my exhibition. They have to agree on the time zone that they are coming, so they have to be on time to see the show. Otherwise, they will be not allowed to come in. The work is called The Remnant of My Volition, Force Major. It's a video installation that you can see I'm peeling off red flag stickers and then emptying out the paper kind of endlessly. There is a bench for the audience to take a seat and watch. And on the bench is um, with embroidery of calendar, which is not starting from January, but from July 1st until um, June 30th. The work is almost like a sarcastic surrendering of myself to the current political situation in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong government is trying to implement a national education. Peeling off a um, wet flag seems to be very as a patriotic act of awarding my action. But on the other hand, it reveals um, white flags, meaning of a surrender. And actually this work questioning the validity of the one country, two system. At the moment, I see my work is about time. And I see my practice is now going into two directions. One of them is the microscopical way of seeing time. It involves a lot of performance and also different interpretation of performance. On the other hand, there is a macro way of seeing time through research of history and social political issues. That's why um, research comes very important in that part. These two different ways of seeing time always intervene. There is always a research part and there is always a personal involvement into that, which gives the work a humanistic way. I'm invited by the Rolls-Royce Art Commission project and I see actually the mascot of Rolls-Royce as an inspiration because it's such a humanistic touch in the car which is a very structural and formal object. After some research then I find out that Rolls-Royce was actually the vehicle for the colonial governor for Hong Kong. I'm thinking the whole project as thinking of the past, present and future of the town and also as a metaphor of the development of Hong Kong. Inside the car, you can see abstract light while in the car, you are very calm and almost like you are in a timeless capsule that you are looking at a video which is talking about a contextual situation of Hong Kong. So this kind of jumping and also different time dimension is all kind of consolidated in this experience. Once you open the car door and then you enter into an archaeological site which you can see as an image, then you are seems like being dragged immediately going back to the, the past. At the very end of the installation, you can see an animation which is a cup floating on a sea as a metaphor of the future of Toon Moon and also as a metaphor of Hong Kong. For me, having the chance to be taken on the vehicle again, it seems like a review of the policy that have been laid down by the colonial government. Housing policy has been one of the major issues that they have still been affecting Hong Kong at the moment.
that's why I'm interested in researching of satellite town development in the 70s relating to the city development and also not only the past but also the present and the future. The story actually goes from 1948 with a report by an urban planner invited from Britain to come to Hong Kong to research about how Hong Kong should be developed after the situation of population and development in Hong Kong Island and Kowloon. Tun Moon as one of the new town have been built. Tun Moon is not a new town. It has carried a prehistoric history so that's why there is an archival photo showing people finding archaeological dig. This is the first governmental report about the possibility of developing new territories. And since then, the colonial government started to plan for new town, which is also called satellite town in new territories. Finally, in the 70s, Tun Moon as one of the new towns have been built by the colonial government. There is a myth saying that Tun Moon have a god stationed in the Castle Peak Temple and he comes to Tun Moon by sea, floating on a teacup and then started to be stationed in Tun Moon and bless the whole town. So having the cup being floating on the water but not moving, it seems like the future of Tun Moon and Hong Kong. The cup supposed to drift to the shore and arrive and bless the town. But in the animation, it is just floating. So it seems like it is still deciding the direction where it should go or if it's going to lead to anywhere. Yeah, I mean, the future is uncertain. Actually, my presence is less and less visible in my work. We are talking about performance, sculpture and photographic documentation. More and more, I'm actually questioning if a performance needs to be photographically documented. I'm thinking about the relationship of these three things. The performance, the resulting work, and the documentation. I'm thinking about not the balance, but the weight maybe of these three things. Like the remnant of my volition, you can only see a hand, the peeling of the sticker. So in that work, you can only see a hand, which is peeling off the stickers in the video. Um, kind of forever, but then it can be abstract in a way. Yeah, can be represented by anyone. An artist in the performance, it's another character in real life. He's another character. <laughs>